the Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute has today decided to award the 2021 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine jointly to David Julius and Ardem Pataputian for their discoveries of receptors for temperature and touch. Here are the two laureates. David Julius was born in 1955 in New York. He performed his prize-winning studies at University of California, San Francisco, where he's still active. Ardem Pataputian was born in 1967 in Beirut, in Lebanon. In his youth, he moved to Los Angeles in the USA. He performed his prize-winning work at Scripps Research La Jolla, California, where he's still active. I will now turn to Professor Patrick Arnfors, adjunct member of the Nobel Committee, who will now describe the discovery. Thank you. This year's Nobel Prize concerns our senses. Our senses allow us to perceive and interpret the world around us. Specialized sense organs, such as our eyes, ears, nose, and mouth, endow us with vision, hearing, smell, and taste. This year's Nobel Prize has to do with our ability to feel temperature and touch, a sense which is called somatosensation. Imagine that you're walking barefoot across a field on a summer's morning. You can feel the warmth of the sun, the coolness of the morning dew, a caressing summer breeze, and the fine texture of blades of grass underneath your feet. These impressions of temperature, touch, and movement are feelings relying on somatosensation. Somato sensation is what gives us the ability to feel our body surface and internal organs. It monitors temperature, pain, touch, and the location and movement of our body, called proprioception. Such information continuously flows from the skin and other deep tissues and connects us with the external and internal world. It is also essential for tasks that we perform effortlessly and without much thought. For example, when taking a coffee on the go, a flow of information from sensors in legs and arms keep track on their position in space. Sensors in the skin registers the texture, size, and shape of the coffee cup, how warm it is, and correct the grip strength to keep a hold on the cup. How physical stimuli such as heat and touch can be registered has fascinated humankind for thousands of years. The French philosopher René Descartes envisioned in the 17th century how this could work, invoking a thread between the skin and the brain. Moving particles of fire on the skin pulled the thread and opened the valve in the brain. During the past century, scientists discovered specialized sensory neurons which have long processes called nerves. The nerves located in, for example, the skin or muscle registers changes in our external and internal environment. There are different types of nerves that detect different kinds of stimuli, such as heat and touch. But how can heat and touch be registered by the nervous system? In some way, the nerves must convert the physical stimuli of heat and touch into a biological signal. Thus, molecular receptors must exist on nerves that detect and convert heat and touch into nerve impulses. 
The identity of such receptors remained unknown until this year's prize-winning work. Capsaicin, the active component of chili peppers, was an essential tool for one of the awarded discoveries. When we eat a spicy meal with chili peppers, it gives a burning, sometimes even painful sensation. We start sweating. Thus, it seems that capsaicin can trick the brain into thinking there is an actual change in body temperature. It was known that capsaicin activates sensory neurons and that this activation is responsible for the burning sensation when eating chili peppers. However, the molecular receptor detecting capsaicin remained a mystery. Now we turn to the work that gave rise to this year's Nobel Prize. <clears throat> David Julius and his co-workers wished to identify the receptor for capsaicin on sensory neurons. Julius assumed that a single gene active in sensory neurons was responsible. He therefore made millions of DNA fragments corresponding to the genes that are active in sensory neurons, hoping that at least one of these would contain the gene for the capsaicin receptor. He introduced single DNA fragments into cells that are insensitive to capsaicin and then added capsaicin and recorded activity. This was a high-risk project, but after looking through large amounts of DNA fragments, the team finally succeeded and identified the capsaicin receptor. It turned out to be a novel protein named TRYPV1, localized in the cell's outer membrane. TRYPV1 was shown to function as a channel for so-called ions. When Julius tested how TRYPV1 reacted to warm temperatures, he noticed that heat opened the channel for ions. He had discovered a temperature-sensitive ion channel, activated by heat that is perceived as painful. A few years later, Julius and the other laureate of this year, Arden Pataputian, independently searched for a cold-sensitive channel and discovered a related channel, TRYPM8. Soon after this, additional related channels were shown to contribute to temperature sensitivity. We now know that a number of different trip channels activated at different temperature intervals act together to code for temperature sensation and for heat-induced pain. While the mechanism for temperature sensation was unfolding, the molecular mechanism for the sensation of touch remained an enigma. The sensation of touch is started by mechanical force, such as when poking on the skin. This can be mimicked in a simpler cell system by directly poking on the membrane of a cell, while at the same time measuring activity of the same cell. Arden Pataputian and co-workers used this system and identified a cell line that was mechanosensitive. In these cells, Pataputian identified 72 candidate genes that he thought could be the critical sensor activated by mechanical force. One by one, each of the 72 candidate genes was silenced and the cells were tested for mechanosensitivity. After nearly a year of painstaking work, 71 of the 72 genes had been tested without any promising results. But when gene number 72 was silenced, sensitivity to poking was lost. The mechanosensitive receptor had been discovered and was named PSO1, after the Greek word for pressure, PSA. Through its similarity to PSO1, a second gene was found and was named PSO2. Paraputian demonstrated that PSO proteins belong to an entirely novel class of proteins and function as ion channels activated by mechanical force. Importantly, P 
PSO2 was then found to be the long sought sensor for touch and proprioception. Sensors we use, for example, in a hug. So to summarize, the work by David Julius and Arden Pataputian has unlocked one of the secrets of nature by explaining the molecular basis for sensing temperature and mechanical force. This represents a foundation for our perception of temperature, heat pain, touch, and the location and movement of our body called proprioception. In further work, TRIP and PSO channels have been found to play key roles in many aspects of physiology, thus establishing far-reaching roles of the newly identified temperature and mechanically sensitive ion channels.